Um, so um, this this amp, uh, and I know you won't memorize this, um, so it's good to take pictures. And I think that you can find these circuits for these online. They're just if you just do a search for audio amp 386, you'll find tons of circuits, and they're usually always the same. Uh, there's a couple of slight variations, but I'm going to build the simplest one for right now. Um, so it has just like any pen, any uh, chip. Um, you, it's got a power pin and a ground pin, um, and then some other stuff. Um, generally speaking, like if you see it uh, on a diagram, uh, like a circuit diagram, something that looks like this. That's, that's sort of the symbol for an amplifier of sorts. Um, and usually you've got like two, like a inverting input and a non-inverting input and then an output. That's, that's the, the typical kind of op amp sim symbol. So if you see this kind of a symbol in a circuit diagram, it's probably referring to a specific type of op amp. And like pins like, like two, three, or something like that, and then somewhere in the parts list, you'll see something that'll say IC, you know, 386 or whatever. Um, and you might even see a couple of these. There are some chips that have more than one thing, and they're broken out, but they're actually the same chip, and they're just different pins or whatever. So if you ever see that symbol, that's that's what that's about. Go LDR 386. 386. 386. Yeah, LN 386. There are different companies that make them, so there's it's a LN3 N4. So, uh, okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is provide power um, to the chip and, and ground. So um, I just grabbed, I'm going to use the same color wire for all of this, so um, that hopefully it doesn't bug anybody. Um, so here's. Uh, okay, so I just happen to have this memorized, but again, you can look this up. The, the ground pin is here, uh, pin number four. And usually the way, this work, the, the way numbering works on this is um, there's a little circle that indicates pin one usually. Uh, there's also a little divot that indicates the left side of the chip. So sometimes that might be missing or it might be a dot. But essentially what you do is you count from here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's that's almost universally true with chips. That's how you count the pins. So it's kind of this funny, like counterclockwise motion from the lower left-hand uh, corner of the chip. Okay. Now um, the other thing I'm going to do, and I'll just tell you, there the the this chip has um, an inverting input and a non-inverting input, and we're not we're basically just going to um, uh, take that and ground it. So I'm going to actually pin number three, I'm also going to short that to ground as well. Um, so there's my ground and then the pin next to it, which is just the non-inverting input on the op amp thing, is, is just shorted to ground. Uh, okay, and then power, the power pin on this chip is pin number six, which is this one right here. Right there. So the second from the right on the top. So that's going to go from here power. Uh, and the chip is now powered and it's doing its thing, except there's no input or output yet. Um, the only other component that you need on, on an amplifier like this is just a big fat capacitor. Uh, the bigger, um, the louder it will be, but not necessarily the way you might think. Um, it might just be slightly louder with a bigger, um, and we're talking, we're talking about basically a hundred micro higher. Um, incidentally, um, I should talk to you at some point about how to read capacitors because they're really confusing. Um, and I'll just go over that now real quick. Um, you don't have to write this down because you can find all this stuff online. But you, generally speaking, this electrolytic type, these, these uh, cylinder types, um, they usually just say on them uh, 100 microfarads, uh, micro F. Um, generally, um, uh, capacitors are... Um, the value is either in microfarads, well, there are farads, but those are big, fat, giant capacitors, but microfarads um, and uh, picofarads. Um, if you use a DVM to measure them, it may measure them in nanofarads. So if you just, if you know your, your, uh, um, 
your measurement units, you know, you've got micro, then you've got nano, and then you've got pico, right? So we're talking six zeros away, um, essentially. So this is a, a microfarad based, so it says right on 100 microfarads. Just so you know, if you get a, one of these kind of capacitors, these ceramic disc capacitors, see how this says 221 on it? It's a three digit number. This is in picofarads. The one is the number of zeros. So the, the, the third digit is the number of zeros. So this is a 220 picofarad capacitor. If you see capacitors that have only two numbers on it, like this one, uh, this is 10 picofarads. Um, if you see capacitors with only one number on them, like this one, this is a one picofarad. Now, by these really tiny ones, because a lot of DV some DVMs, cheaper DVMs, can't measure that low. So um, that's why it's important to kind of understand the nomenclature. So um, again, this stuff is all online, and, and there are there are exceptions to all these things as well. So it can get really confusing. Um, in general, like you know these. If you see one that says 103, that's one that's used a lot. That's, a, that's basically 0.01 microfarads or 10,000 picofarads. Uh, and you use these a lot in, in electronics, in um, these and 104s, which are 0.1 microfarads. So anyway, that's, that's how that works. Okay, so I'm going to, for, for this one component that we need for the output, um, we basically need about 100 microfarads or higher. So here's a 100 micro, microfarad capacitor. Again, these are polarized types, so um, it's a good idea to put them in the right way. This probably wouldn't explode with uh, the voltage, that, but okay. So um, I plug the longer tail uh, into the into pin number uh, five. That's the output, and the shorter tail is just going to go the the ground is just going to go there, and my speaker is going one one side is going to just go on the ground it doesn't really matter well in in you know in applications where you really care of course it matters i mean because it you know it, it determines whether the speaker is moving this way or whether it whether positive is moving out or negative is moving out but for these kinds of like little toy kind of things that we're doing it doesn't really matter that much so i'm plugging the so i'm not paying attention to which or which side of the speaker we're on. I'm going to plug the other one into the same rail that the um, output of the capacitor is going into. So everyone see that? We're almost done. So the only other thing we need to do now is get an input. The input is on pin number two. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, um, strip it, um, and stick that into pin two. and. I've got an amplifier, and so presumably if I hook this up to something, uh, we would get uh, some kind of sound. Does anybody have, um, you know, I'm just now I'm thinking that we, we do need to amplify something at some point, something that would be easy to grab with outputs. Anybody have any ideas? Um, actually, no. Just sorry. like a headphone jack of some sort? No, just a source, like something that we can actually listen to. Uh, maybe. I have my iPod. Yeah, do, does any, do we have any old... Um, Jacks that we can cut off and this one we had. No, but that's not the right one. We need like a mini. Uh, I was gonna say I have a quarter inch jack attached to nothing right now. Uh, no, that won't help us with that. Well, I think oh, the, the, where's the bag? I was what I, I think it's right here. I know I'm pretty sure there might be one in there. That oh no, I think it's wrong. I think I don't think there are any of these in there. I think I went looking for one. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we just fill the oscillator then? Because um, we're going to do that anyway, right? So, um, we'll just build a real simple square wave oscillator on the same board, and that'll be our that'll be our output. Um, so, I'm using this this 74 C14 chip um, to do this, and this is like what we did at the beginning of the semester. So just to review, um, again, it's just a chip. It needs power. It needs ground. Um, and then we're going to set up an RC network to create an oscillation. So um, let's see. On this chip, um, uh, the pin number 7 right here is the ground. Oops. Pin number 7. And pin number uh, 14, which is here, is our power pin. 
Okay, so that is now powered. And now all we need to do is set up a, uh, an RC circuit that um, is within range of hearing. So, and I just, you know, I'm sort of used to doing this. So I know that um, this would be a pretty good choice. 0.01 microfarad capacitor. So um, this chip is a hex Schmidt trigger chip. So it there are pairs of, of pens. So this can make six oscillators essentially. And remember, all this is doing um, is it's like when this when this pin is high, then this pin is low. And when this pin is low, then this pin is high. So all we're doing is we're using a, a resistor and a capacitor to create a flux, uh, an oscillation and which will flip-flop that pin and create a square array. That's all we're doing. So I'm going to take this and um, insert one leg into ground and the other leg into pin number one of the two of the of the this pair. I could do this in any pair, um, uh, but I'm going to start here. Uh, and then a resistor. So we need basically something um, along the lines of a 10k resistor. Will probably will probably get us in range. And again, I just just, just know this from from having done a lot of it. I mean, it might be a little bit high. We might have to play with this a little bit. Um, but this should this should create an oscillation. We shouldn't really be hearing that yet. We're getting feedback inside of the um, thing. Okay, there's our oscillator. So I've got now it's the same pin. So with the res sorry, I, I, I skipped a step. I put the resistor between um, pins one and two. So pin one has the, the capacitor going to ground, and it also has one half of the resistor, and the other half is going into pin two. And pin two is also the output. It's the flip-flopping side. Um, and so it's basically creating a square wave of this particular frequency, and the amplifier is amplifying it. And if I do that, why is that happening? because my fingers are like resistors. And so when I touch my fingers between, I'm, I'm essentially, I'm putting in, par in series, no, in parallel, I guess, with this resistor, another resistor, which is my fingers. So I can actually like do that. Um, if I use, if we use a, like a, one of these, let's see if we have a lower, we can make a lower pitch because it'll, Okay, here's a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. So this should make a much lower tone. There we go. That'll sound better through the spring reverb. Okay, so there's our low tone. Now, let me show you one other thing about the amp, um, or two other things about it. This amp is, as I say, I'm, I'm not lying when I say it's a cheap amp. Uh, it works really well, but um, it's not, it's noisy, and it, and it can easily go into self-oscillation. One way to prevent that, and this is just a modification to the circuit to make it a little bit more robust, but you don't have to do this. Pin number uh, seven um, is a pin that you can, if you, if you basically, if you put a capacitor between it and ground of about 0.01 microfarads, or just a, basically a small, but that's usually a good value. That will, that may prevent the circuit from going into oscillation. It's not anyway, so it's not going to affect it if I plug it in. But you, you may, I'm only mentioning this because you may see some diagrams that include that and just know that that's actually optional. How do you know it's going into um, self oscillation? Um, it will start, it will start doing funny things like, uh, actually it was, remember when it was making sound before? Right. It, that's what it was doing. Okay. It was os It was going into self oscillation. Um, and sometimes when you're building a complex circuit, um, and it's kind of weird and feeding back, the, the, it can freak the, the amp out. I don't understand exactly why it happens, but I definitely know that it happens. Another modification to the amp is if you insert a capacitor of about, well, this is fine, 4.7 microfarads, anything around like 1 to 10, maybe a little more of this, uh, between pin 8 and pin 1, that's essentially like um, what you would do if you wanted to amplify a, a microphone where you needed more amplification. That's a gain, is what that is. You can actually set up a gain. You can do this with a, with a pot as well and, and make a gain pot. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can make a gain. But basically, if you just insert this between pin one and, or pin eight and pin one, it will largely increase and it will also distort, in many cases, the signal, which is awesome. 
<laughs> um, and so sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually like include this in the circuit but not connect it here and, and uh, hook up a little switch um, or even a couple of electrodes and then I can use my body capacitance to sort of bring that in and out and it can create some kind of cool effects. Okay, so um, anyway, that's, that's the amp. That's it. That's all there is to making an amp. Uh, what we want to do now, I guess, is... Um, is is try our little spring reverb out. This it's not gonna a square wave is not gonna be that interesting through it, but I I really wanted to use the spring reverb, so <laughs> so I'm just gonna build another amp um, to amplify the actual spring. So we'll put this in here and maybe actually just for fun we'll let me make it loud. Except I can't talk, I'll do that later. Um, okay, so again, I need to connect this amp up. This amp, by the way, draws very little power. That's another nice thing about it. So that's why I like to use them for these solar power things, because they just don't they just don't require a lot of power. That's generally the kind of amp you use for your. Well, I I use I I'll tell you what I use. I use that, or I use this these days. Yeah, um, or I buy, or I get something that I didn't make myself. Like, like that's, in, that's what's in the Hemi, and I didn't make those amps. I could never make those amps. Um, we'll never say never, I guess, but... Okay, so I'm going to basically do exactly the same thing with this amp. I'm going to hook up pins 3 and 4 to ground, uh, hook up pin 8 to power, um, Let's see. Uh, we need we need another capacitor for the output. Doesn't really matter. That this, this is another hundred microfarad. Perfect. Stick that there. Is that going? Yeah. Um, now, is there a? You want to hand me that big, fat speaker? Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of speakers, it doesn't really. I'm I'm using these. This is an eight ohm speaker. Uh, this is a four ohm speaker, I think. It doesn't ma make much difference, by the way. Um, okay, so I'm going to connect this to the other amp. So ground, power, and then what I want to connect up to that amp is the actual contact microphone. Now, uh, I, I'm going to have feedback issues if I'm not careful. Uh, well, we'll just let that happen and correct it. But so this is going to go uh, to ground, one half, and the other half is going to go to the input of the amp. And <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I'm not hearing anything. backwards or something now. Well, I'm surprised we're not hearing anything. I thought we hear something. Okay, let's just um, make sure that maybe there's something wrong with the chip. So I'll replace this with this. Oh yeah, okay, that works. So, let's try... So we know the speaker works. Oh, yeah, so something's weird about... I, oh, no? Oh, I don't have input right now. Uh, see, I'm ac actually expecting this chip not to work. because Yeah, so it isn't working. So let's try another chip. The reason I believe it's possible that there's a dead chip is that um, it's 
sometimes when they die, I leave them laying around and forget that they're dead and they end up getting thrown back in. So maybe that's what's going on. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> Never mind. I'm so dumb. Does anybody, can anybody see what it is? Here, I'll, I'll hook it back up. I'll hook it back up. Take a look at the difference between the two. I'll take that out too. So they're, oh, you see what the I power did? Yeah, power. Power's in the wrong way. I get, I do that all the time. It's because I'm used to, the, so a lot of chips have power. And, uh, so, um, yeah, we ought to have, yeah. Okay. So let's go back to our original. Sorry about that. Mom learning moment. Okay. Uh, there's our oscillator. Let's make it really loud and nasty. Great. And now we should be able... Oh, and then I need to get the input from the contact mic. And uh, ground and perfect. Now, so just to demonstrate, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to just isolate these a little bit. So there's our spring reverb. So watch. So obviously it would sound cooler if we... Uh, there's, there is that circuit going into oscillation, probably. If I, I bet that would go away if I, I don't like that better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, it kind of, well, it didn't work, but. Cool. But anyway, you get the idea. There's like a. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to show you the tail of the reverb. Because it's. Such a lean sound, it's into it. You can hear that stuff too. Yeah. It's probably, um, wow. So if I get it close, you know, I could create some interesting feedback. Maybe. It's actually behaving, which is very interesting. Wow, I can't believe it's not feeding back. Oh well. But that's it. So I, we just built two amps. Just um, let's make this one really nasty too. You can also just like, you know. Oh. Uh. 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 Oh, well. I'd have to like isolate it more. But anyway, that's your, that's, that's, that's spring reverb. Um, and if you want, um, cause this, this stuff is all in the lab here. Um, so I'm going to take this home, but. Um, I'll, I can just leave this out because I know you want to mess. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> just keep in mind, like, you know, this, let's hook this up for a second. If you want to get into, like, doing some circuit bending, it's a circuit, circuits like these. Oops. Sorry, I need to. Circuits like these are pretty easy to circuit bend because, you know, if you just, like, if we just hook up another oscillator, um, on the other side or something like um, let's try something that is in that not in the audible range. So here's a microfarad. No, that's quite too big. Here's a well, that might do it. One microfarad. So if I hook this up, I'm gonna. So I've got this pair here. I'm gonna skip this pair and go to this pair. Um, so here's, I'm just going to make another oscillator and use it to modulate the other one. And it doesn't do what you would expect necessarily. Um, 
Okay, so we won't hear anything now. If I let me just show you, if I if I go between these two, like that's that one, and that's that one. So that's a really low one. It's like almost too low, almost clicks. So if I take the output of this one, now this is not the really the type of chip for this. There's another type of chip over there, the 4093, that actually has it's like the has the invert has both the inverting and the non-inverting input, and you can either either send power to one of them or another oscillator and that you can actually like really modulate but you can kind of get away with it with these chips too if you just take the output of one pair and plug it into the output of the other pair that's no it didn't work oh i might have to oh wait no this is what i not not that uh, um you do it through a capacitor that's the key let's see if it works There we go. There's a, there's something. So we're getting something kind of interesting going on. Let me place this one with this one. So see what I'm doing now? Now I'm just playing. So I've totally changed the, the way this sounds now. And I can just use my fingers to do this. Or I could take various points of this. So this is how I experiment with circuit bending with these. You just take a bunch of wires. And just put them in random places in the circuit, just like you would, you know, circuit bend anything. So there, I've got a nice little circuit bend point. If I solder some dimes onto each one of those, I've got something I can play. And I could take this one, and sometimes it, like, if you just plug it into one that's not being used, it'll do weird things. Because it turns, it, like, creates this. Or they, they need to just, like, start doing weird things, like, you know, plugging things into the wrong places. Just try looking for. Yeah, if I want to be higher, I mean, I could probably replace this with one of these guys. So that's why when people ask me what the dimes do on my instruments, I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, it's just it does that. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's um, I'll leave this here and, and mess with it. Um, so there are.